If you work with large lists of data, you don't have to call it a database necessarily, that term is not really used in Excel, but I think a lot of us would call this list that we see on this worksheet, we'd call this a database. What do we do with a database? We analyze information from it. Frequently, we need to put it in a certain order. This list is sorted by employee name. We might want to sort it by department, or as we look at the different columns, there are any number of different columns. We might want to rearrange the data. The concern when we're working with large amounts of data is we don't want to rearrange the information in just one of the columns. We want to make sure that all the information, for example, for Michael Atkins, stays together. As a general rule, sorting means rearrange the rows of a list. And you want to be careful about that when you select the data to be sorted. Now, this is a large list. And by the way, a little tip here, if you want to get down to the bottom kind of quickly, if you've got contiguous data in these columns, you can just click a cell and then double click the bottom edge. It'll take you down to the bottom. So we've got, what, 743 rows here, including the title. And we'll double click the top edge to go back up top. Now, if you work with sorting and filtering and other database-like features in Excel, everything will proceed much more smoothly if the list you're working with has no empty rows within it, no empty columns. Everything's going to work much, much better. It's also better if your titles are in a single row, as they are here. And as a general rule, too, these entries should be unique. You can work around that, but it works more smoothly if the various headings here are unique. Excel nearly always picks up on the fact that you do have a header row. Sometimes just the different formatting is the trigger for Excel to recognize that. If we want to rearrange the order of these rows, we can select all the data. Now, it's not wrong to highlight the data every time you want to sort, but that's uh, unnecessary work. As long as you've checked out at least once this list to make sure you don't have any empty rows or empty columns, you can have empty cells as we see in column G, that's, that's okay. But if we want to sort this list, as long as we know that we have no empty rows and columns, click anywhere within this list. And then a few places we could start. On the Home tab, we could move to the right choose sort and filter, and then choose custom sort, or perhaps more directly, but just as many clicks, go to the data tab and choose sort. This activates the sort dialog box. This allows us to sort based on which columns we want to sort by. And we can sort on more than one column. Currently, this list is sorted by employee name. Maybe we want to sort it by department. So in the first panel here, next to sort by, we'll click the drop arrow, and Excel shows us a list of the headings. Now, there will be some situations where when you enter this dialog box, the check box to the right, my data has headers, might be unchecked. If that's unchecked, then if you click this arrow here, you're gonna see the column letters. So nearly always you would have headings, and that box will be checked. If it's not, then do check it. We want to sort by department. Now, in some departments, there will be a lot of people there. And so within each department, we might want them in order by, for example, their status, whether they're full-time, half-time, etc. So we might have a secondary level. Let's add a level here. Maybe we want to sort by status. One of these departments might have maybe 100 people in it. We've got a lot of full-time people in that same department, so we want to be able to find information there, maybe based on a, another level. So a third level might be years of service, for example. Now that's a numeric field, and we might want to consider having those records within the same status, same department, from the highest number of years to the lowest or in reverse. So smallest to largest or possibly largest to smallest. When we're strictly talking about text entries, like in department and status, I think nearly always you would want the A to Z, the alphabetical order. In older versions of Excel, you could only sort on three fields at once. We could add a fourth level if we wanted to. 
Still, we might have a lot of people with the same number of years in the same status and department, so we could add a fourth level if we wanted to. In fact, you could add up to 64 levels. I think most times that we wouldn't even approach that. But we could have a fourth level here, maybe alphabetical by name. And of course, that wouldn't come into play very often. Click OK. Remember, department, status, years, employee name. So all the account management people are there together first. That's the first department. We've got a number of them that are contract people, and we see how they're sorted by years. Only a few of them have the same number of years, for example, these two, but they're alphabetical by name. And again, the larger the department, the more likely we are to refer to that fourth level. If you only sort occasionally, it's best to use this sort button. If you get more comfortable with sorting and you need to use it often, you can sort sometimes more efficiently by using the A, Z, and the Z, A buttons. Now, this allows us to sort only by one field at a time, but it can be relatively fast. Suppose you get a phone call and someone needs this list. They want it alphabetized by employee name. We'll click anywhere in column A. Click the A, Z button right next to sort. The entire list is now alphabetized. The rows got rearranged. You can be sure that David Adams has all the information about David Adams together, just as it had been before, but obviously it's in a different location. Now, something about using these buttons that you need to know too. You've printed this, you've sent it off to your friend, and you need to look at the list now, and you want it sorted by department. So a quick department sort, the active cell is within column C, Click AZ. It's now in order by department, but almost as important is what's the secondary order of this list? Within each department, how are the records ordered? They're alphabetical by name. In other words, the previous sort still has a role to play. And if we now sort by status, you can be sure that all the people of the same status will be in the same department. Now, if you only sort occasionally, I think shy away from these buttons. I think you want to be a little bit more methodical about this. The sort button does the job for us. And as always, when you're working with this feature, do check out the results. If you're a little bit nervous about something going wrong here, I think you'll quickly see that's not going to happen very often, but you could maybe make a copy of the sheet ahead of time if that's a concern. So this is a great feature and nearly always sorting means rearranging rows. There is an option to rearrange columns. Most people don't need that particular option.